Good morning, everybody. Welcome to City Hall. Welcome to Council Chambers, and welcome to meeting of the Los Angeles City Council for today, Tuesday, May 31st, 2005. The City Council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Meetings are open to the public, and we do invite you to join us. For members of the public unable to attend council meetings, we can be viewed live on your cable station, Channel 35. We can also be viewed live via webcast from the City's homepage or heard via Council phone. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Cardenas, Garcetti, Grohl, Hahn, Labange, Ludlow, Misikowski, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Smith, Viragosa, Weiss, Nain, Padilla, 10 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you very much. The council is officially in session. 
And let me ask uh, Councilmember Labange, fresh back from a trip to Japan, to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Labange. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And it's uh, ask you all to please rise and place your hand over your heart. Repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Welcome home. Uh, Madam Clerk, first order of business, please. Approval of the minutes. Uh, Ms. Grohl moves, Mr. Smith seconds. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Mr. Zine moves and Mr. Cardenas seconds. Uh, Mr. President, this is the time for comments from the public on items not on Council's agenda. And I do not have requests from members of the public to address the Council under general public comment. General public comment for today's meeting is now closed. Next item, please. Uh, before beginning the regular agenda, there is a request to continue item number 23, and that it would be to Friday. Members, any objection to continuing item 23? Seeing none, so ordered. Next item. On the regular agenda, items noticed for public hearing. Item number one is a confirmation of a building and safety assessment. Okay, I do have a card in item number one. Let's call that special. Item number two is also a public hearing item, and the applicant consents to a continuance to June 14th. Any objection to continuing item number two? Seeing none. With that objection, the new date is uh, June 14th, two weeks from today. Next item. Item number three is also a public hearing item, and I believe there is a card on that item also. We do have cards on item number three. We'll call that special. Next item. Next items are four through 26, items for which public hearings have been held. On item 26, there are two reports on the file, and I believe the recommendation for council could be to uh, adopt the Budget and Finance Committee report. Okay, that's uh, the recommendation before us. Colleagues, items four through 26 now before us. Public hearings on these items have been held in committee. A motion from the floor would be required to reopen the public hearing. Do we have requests for specials? Mr. Labanche. Yeah, number 16 for an amendment. 16 call special by Mr. Labanche. Is that going to be a written amendment? Okay, that should make its way around the horseshoe. Any other specials? Seeing none on the balance of the items, please open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 10 ayes. Those are approved. Next items, please. Next items are items for which public hearings have not been held, 27 through 44. Ten votes are required for consideration. Without objection, items 27 through 44 before the City Council today. I do have a card on item 39. We'll call that special. On the balance of the items, I do not have requests from members of the public to address the Council. Public hearings are open and closed. Any specials? Items 27 through 44. Any specials? Mr. Parks. I'm sorry, we're running late. One of the things is asked we will special or, or continue the prop O item that we continue to today. Ms. Ms. Sikowski would like to be here for that discussion, and she won't be back until Wednesday, I mean, until Friday. Which item number is that? 46? 46. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll get there in just a minute here. Items 27 through 44. Any specials? 42, call special by Mr. Zine. Uh, on the balance of the items, Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Those are approved. Next item, please. Uh, Mr. President, on the supplemental agenda, item number 45, no action is required on that one, uh, in as much as no uh, veto message has been received as yet. Okay, next item, please. And number 46, I believe there was a request to continue that matter to Friday, I believe. Okay, without objection, that item is continued. Next item. That would take council back to the items call special. Uh, the first item call special was item number one, and that was for a card from the public. Well, let's take uh, public hearings for item one and 39 concurrently. And the council calls forward Ms. Sylvia Lynn Hawkins. Ms. Hawkins, item one and item 39 together. You don't want to speak on these items? Okay, what about 39? Now's the time. Good morning, everyone. 
Uh, my name is Miss Sylvia Lenny Hawkins. On item number uh, 39, before celebrating this annual, 13th annual Malcolm X Fiesta, we must all stand against any test of A through G testing we must pass in order to go to the next step in college after high school at any cost or price to take this test. We do not want to pay money. At this time, as we look at each job position, there is now no need for a four-year term college degree for any university is needed. Only a two-year junior college a, or a six-month course class is needed with also a three-month course training class with any job position with pay is needed. Any age should not be any issue for not getting the job position because you are young or old. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This concludes public comment item one and item 39. Members of the council wishing to speak on these items? Seeing none, let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Those items are approved. Next item, please. Item number three called special four card from the public. And we do have a number of speaker cards on item three. Let me read the names and uh, ask people to please line up behind the podium. Uh, for item number three, Calixto Beltran, Leron Gubler, Aaron Epstein, Robert Blue, Chris Shabel, Ziggy Cruz, and Cindy from the Garfield Watch. If you would please make a formal line behind the podium and introduce yourself uh, as it becomes your turn to speak. Buenos días, mi nombre es Calixto Beltrán. Este, trabajo para el Reines en Hollywood Hotel. Trabajo por tres años. Este, la razón por que estoy aquí es para... Good morning, my name is Calixto Beltrán. I work for Renaissance Hotel in Hollywood. The reason why I'm here is... La razón por que estoy aquí es porque quiero decirles que trabajar con Unión es tener buenos beneficios como en estos momentos los beneficios que tenemos en el Reinesen, este vacaciones pagadas, este seguros médicos, en este hay varios beneficios que cuando uno trabaja con compañías que no tienen unión no puede agarrar los beneficios que tenemos. The reason why I'm here is because in Renaissance Hotel, working for Renaissance Hotel, I have benefits. I work with the union. And working with the union, I have benefits, uh, paid insurance, medical. If I don't, wouldn't work for a Renaissance Hotel and a union, I wouldn't have those benefits. Yeah. Eso es todo lo que tenía que decir. Muchas gracias. Buenos días. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much, and good morning. Good morning, council members. I'm Leron Gubler, president uh, CEO of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, here to advise you that the chamber is strongly in support of this project. We've uh, worked with the uh, developers and the CRA and the MTA now for four years uh, to get to the point where we are today. Uh, we believe this is a real win-win project for Hollywood and Los Angeles, a uh, tremendous public-private opportunity. Uh, we're having a, th a $325 million project with relatively uh, low public investment. Uh, it's going to be uh, of the density that is needed and which is for this important area of Hollywood and it will be the catalytic project for the Hollywood and Vine area. Uh, as I mentioned, this project has uh, been in planning now for four years. There have been many opportunities uh, for public input and as a result a lot of changes have been made over the course of the years that have actually improved the project. It's something which we think will be very beneficial to the area uh, in, of Hollywood for the long term. Uh, there will be an opportunity uh, for affordable housing, an opportunity for jobs, and it's a type of project of which we can all be proud. So the uh, chamber strongly backs it and urges your support today. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, my name is uh, Robert Blue, and I'm a co-trustee along with Betty L. Blue, Blue Tr Family Trust. We're the owner of the building identified as the Herman Building, also known as the Bernard Luggage Building, uh, located at 1636 to 1642 Vine Street. Uh, these comments, you know, in addition to the letter submitted on, be on our behalf by the attorney, C. Robert Ferguson, dated uh, 52705. Uh, we object to the approval of the uh, DDAs for Legacy Partners and HEI Gatehouse Capital as it currently constituated. Const um, as I stated in my letter to you, which I submitted, uh, dated May 31st, the project would have a greater chance of success if the project was scaled down and preceded without the threat of eminent domain powers by the CRA. Uh, the article in the Los Angeles Times Journal titled Hollywood's Close-Up pointed out that s smaller private investments have had a greater effect on forging a turnaround massive projects orchestrated by the Community Redevelopment Agency and subsidized with public money, such as the Hollywood and Highland Project, have not been successful. The Hollywood, Hollywood and Highland Project Entertainment Complex was a $615 million project, which sold two years ago for $201 million to CIM. On April 30th, uh, 2003, Council Member Eric Garcetti cited this uh, behemoth project when he discussed past bad practices of the CRA uh, during a joint hearing of the CRA and the City Council regarding the, regarding the Hollywood uh, Redevelopment Plan Amendment. The City of Los Angeles is still losing money on the parking area subsidized with public money for this Hollywood and Highland project. Uh, the acquisition of land for the Sunset Vine project was done without the threat of eminent domain powers of the CRA. The Sunset Vine project was considered financially successful. Uh, it was developed for about $115 million and recently sold for $165 million. According to the Los Angeles Business Journal, the, there's a Niederlander project. Uh, it's very similar to the Hollywood and Vine project being considered under Agenda Item 3. Uh, it is a $300 million mixed-use uh, project which is purely market-driven. No uh, public money is proposed so far. Uh, this, the site for the Niederlander project is across the street from the site for the proposed Hollywood Vine project. Um, we intend and, and would be pleased to restore the Herman Building and keep, it his, and keep our historical business, Bernard Luggage Pump, Company, in the building. Uh, as I mentioned, at the April 30th, 2003 joint hearing of the CRA and the City Council, it is very hard on a business to stay in business after moving from a long-term established location. Other businesses, such as Linoleum City, brought this issue up at the same hearing. Being forced to relocate reduces the chance of survival for small business. Uh, the developer for this project are big boys and girls and can perform the project on a smaller scale or the same scale without taxpayer handouts and government assistance. And just follow the lead of the neighbor across the street, the Niederlander family. Thank you. Good morning. My name's Chris Shebel. I'm a member of the Hollywood Project Area Committee for the redevelopment area. Uh, let me say first that I am for development, but I would like to quote the Wall Street Journal opinion, April 20th, 04, let there be blight. Government finds ways to take your property, uh, that was a subheading, and then they said, this abuse of eminent domain is part of a larger pattern across America. In the past, public use was, me was meant for highways, schools, etc. But now, it now means government seizes property, seizes private property, and then handing it over to rich and politically well-connected uh, uh, private companies, sometimes for as little as a dollar. That's my comment. Too bad for the owners who have been in business 50, 60, 70, sometimes even 100 years. The CRA's history has been to move out the old for pennies, accept the owners who are litigious, bring in the low-income jobs while rewarding the here today and gone tomorrow firms by giving away the store. This project, the property owners were not asked if they wanted to be involved or if they wanted to sell. The project has been altered with more condos with less space in the same building. And the W hotels may take on the management of the hotels. 
so no W Hotel. And I would like to quote from Starwood's letter of 12-12-02 to Mr. Sobel of MTA. Gate, Gatehouse and its partner Legacy are in an exclusive negotiation agreement with the MTA and the CRA who will lead to a, a more formal development when the eminent domain and the economic issues are resolved. There are two lawsuits hanging over the project. One will come up in October. The second, if the parcels are not obtained, will be go back to um, court in March of 06. And uh, because the, the project specific ERI was not obtained. One in the sup Supreme Court, which may make my speech mo moot. I, I only hope. Uh, Councilman Eric Garcetti, you wrote, uh, your, your criteria for a fire station was that a willing seller was found. The same criteria should be used for this project. Legacy partners have a portfolio of more than $4 billion and so much confidence in Hollywood, should not, they should not need CRA handouts and should be ashamed that they are waiting for eminent domain by the CRA. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ziggy Cruz, and I have submitted the same papers which I'm, which I'm about to read to you to the um, clerk to be distributed later to your convenience to read. Anyway, I'm addressing you on item number three of today's meeting because it seems that every input from the community is necessary in order to make your council aware of the situation that the possible use of eminent domain by the CRA in order to obtain some of the properties located in the Hollywood Vine Redevelopment Project Area is unavoidable. It is the second time for me that I'm um, being threatened pretty much by losing my employment to eminent domain. While in the past, the business I was employed with had to give way in order to build a new elementary school, this time around the small business called Bernard Luggage is threatened by the CRA to take the small private business on private property to give it to a private developer. There is something wrong with this. Um, I believe in the Fifth Amendment of the United States in which it says that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. And this is definitely not public use, this is private use. So again, you might want to reconsider reading the Constitution there. And then on November 14th in 2002, uh, 2003, Councilman Eric Assetti stated that LA should lead by listening to small business. And he also said that small businesses are the lifeblood of the local economy. But too often city, uh, city Hall doesn't have its fingers on the city's pools where small businesses are concerned. We mean to change that by listening and leading. We're just to find out if that is actually going to happen. Because these words sound nice, though at this point it seems only to be that, words. Um, I believe that Councilman Erica said he is in the position to make a difference by including small businesses to be part of any new development in his district. I also believe that eminent domain is a law that was thought up, but was never thought through. Uh, the government is speaking about reimbursements, relocations, and compensations for the property owners, but where does it leave the people who actually work on this property? For example, the employee, employees, which is like me. If the law could be changed or taking a look into it, taking this avenue to be, for example, fair to the employees by offering at least vocational training or help people with the research to find a different employment, that would be, at least for me, something to maybe change my mind about this kind of law. Until that happens, however, I will always oppose them in a domain. I've mentioned before that I'm currently employed in one of the businesses that is threatened by the Hollywood Vine redevelopment. Bernard Luggage has been in the location on 1642 uh, North Vine Street since the early 50s, and it is not the kind of business that changes ownership on a regular basis. The family, my employees, the Bernard uh, Blue family, they have been 
the owners of this business for all these years. They have not been handing it over to somebody else, for example. I've personally known and have been told by some of our regular customers that they've been patrons on this, uh, of the store for many years. I know from some of the customers that they were children when they first came into the store with their parents. Now these customers are bringing back their own kids to us. Bernard Luggage is an icon that has been through all the changes in Hollywood. It has seen movie stars come and go, small businesses uh, went in and out, but we have been at the same location for all these years. If nothing happens, the wrecking ball will threaten Bernard Luggage, a company that is a small business and we believe, as Councilman Erica said, he stated in his statement, that small businesses are the lifeblood of our local economy. Now I'm addressing you personally saying, before you make a decision, I would like for you to think about the fact that if you eminent domain this kind of place, instead of actually supporting the small businesses, you are taking out the lifeblood of the local economy. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Before I begin, would it be possible to have all of the council members pay attention to our public speakers? I noticed you've been carrying on a conversation during the previous public speakers. Uh, Councilman Parks, would it be possible for you to listen to what we have to say? Mr. Epstein, go, go right ahead. People are listening, and I'll, I'll remind you that all the councilors have monitors in front of them that Well, for have example, the, uh, Councilman LeBonge here. represents Hollywood. I don't know where he is. I've seen Councilman Garcetti. He's good, good. Uh, I've seen Councilman Garcetti paying attention, for which I'm grateful. Sir, the clock is running, so if you'd like to address the, the issue, please address the issue. Otherwise, I'm going to ask the next speaker to come Very forward. well. I shall address the issue. Approximately one and a half years ago, when the matter of CRA project renewal in Hollywood was present, presented, the message that was emphasized by the agency was that it would put its primary emphasis on aiding the small property owner. Today, to my sorrow, the first project renewal that is being presented by the CRA is the destruction of one of Hollywood's historic small businesses. I'm referring to Bernard's luggage on the corner of Hollywood and Vine. Now, when I mention my objections to eminent domaining Bernard luggage or any other business, I'm always told by staff members of the agency, architects who work on the job, or even big time developers, that the agency will pay compensation to the original owner for relocation. The German word for relocation is die Verlagen. My apologies to those that know the language better than I do. When the Germans kick what they called undesirables out of the occupied areas in Europe during World War II, they did not use the word extermination to the townspeople. They simply said they were being relocated. Relocation today does not mean the killing of property owners, but it's the death knell for their businesses. In Hollywood, for over 60 years, there has been a piano store at Highland and Hollywood. There has been a linoleum store at Santa Monica and Wilton, a luggage store at Hollywood and Vine. When customers are shopping for these products, they may not remember the exact name of the businesses, but they remember that the specific products can be seen in great quantity and selection at these locations. I'm passing out to you, officer, could you take these? I'm passing out to you today an article in the LA Times that describes the closing of our piano store. It was not the eminent domain, but when it moved, it died within six months. The owner said, everybody knew our old store, but now nobody can find us. Dear friends, eminent domain is for purposes of turning property over to private developers, is against our free enterprise system. I may not be a super religious person, but I do respect what God handed down to our people from the top of Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments, which included, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's property. If you must give our money to legacy parkers, partners, just say no to kicking out our small businesses. You, dear friends, I'm assuming are all people of good faith. Tom, I know you're of good faith. Please, respect your faith. We will all sleep better at night. Thank you for listening, and God bless. Thank you very much. Our final speaker, please. Hello. My name is Cindy Duhame. I'm a resident of Hollywood. I live on Garfield Place by um, Hollywood Boulevard. Um, 
I speak more on a personal level rather than from my outline. And I'm going to do the best I can. I feel very self-conscious up here because I'm very tall. And I'm also a very small person because I live on a very limited income. I'm also very hard of hearing, so I read people's lips and I pay attention to what goes on around me. I'm very scared. And I'm very disappointed in you people. Uh, Mr. Villagrosa, um, all of you other people who seem to be whispering and talking and laughing, the young lady over there. I wonder how, serious, how seriously you're taking to issues of people expressing their concerns about what's going on in the areas that you live in. How many people live in Hollywood? How many people are threatened by eminent domain? How many people have heard conversations from somebody that works for the CRA that says, we don't have to pay them that much money for relocation assistance. It's really not that big a deal to get them out. I'm shocked. I'm hard of hearing. I'm not supposed to hear that kind of thing. Maybe I misunderstood them. But I heard someone from the CRA say, we don't have to pay them that much. I'm disabled. I only get 5000 maximum to be relocated. But does that really pay for the cost of living increase from living from one apartment to another? You're taking a small business that's the bloodline of the economy, and you're going to force them to move someplace else. Do they really have the finances? to support and stay alive in the economy today when someone big can come along and just plow you down and move in a mixed income building when we already have too many business buildings to begin with? What are you going to put in there? We have enough businesses as it is. You're going to put low income in there. Great. You're just going to add more crime to the area. I will say that I've been very proud to live in Hollywood. I've taken the gangs off Garfield Place. I've taken the drugs out of Garfield Place. Mr. LeBond, you came to our little block party. I was very proud. You also helped take the buses off. We had 532 buses on a quarter mile street every single day. Thank you for helping me take those buses off the street. But now we've got the CRA project that's going to come in and remove me from my little apartment and put me in an apartment where I won't be able to afford to live in because you're going to give me $5,000. How long is that going to cover me for before I start living on the streets? Because remember, I live on disability. I get less than 1000 a month. So I, I to conclude, for those of please. you who listen to me, I appreciate it. Like I said, I speak from my heart. Some of you are still talking to other people. Some of you are listening to me, and I appreciate it. But I really would like you to take into consideration what your decisions do to people around you. Thank you. Thank you very much. This concludes public comment on this item. Mr. Garcetti. Thank you very much to all members of the public that testified here today. Thank you very much for being here. I'd like to invite uh, CRA staff forward to the table um, to ask some questions on some of the issues that were raised and some clarifications, and then also just point out a couple of things as well um, about this project. And um, first of all, just kind of working backwards. The CRA um, in Hollywood does not have power of eminent domain over any residential properties. Is that correct? Correct. If we can just make sure that the microphone is it on. Yeah, there yeah, we okay. go. Yes, that is correct. So, so I, I agree with the last speaker in terms of anybody who is living in an apartment that the CRA's power should not be used in residential areas. I wanted to clarify that for everybody. Um, it's in a different area from where the last speaker uh, lives, and that, that would not be happening. But we appreciate that, and that's something that I still philosophically agree with. I, I, I think we as a body do too. Are there any CRA areas um, in Los Angeles where residents, uh, residential property can be taken under eminent domain? Uh, every project area is different. There are some where you can take residential property, okay. and those have PACs, project area committees. Okay. And, and in Hollywood, though, just to clarify, In Hollywood, you cannot take residential okay. property. Um, it is always, and I should uh, clarify, because I think I've always said that it, um, a certain, whether it's a, a firehouse or whether it's something else that I have a preference, that there be a willing seller. And it's still my preference here, and I would still say that to the CRA, that th there be negotiated settlements. And I know there's been tremendous progress made. It's not 100% yet, but I, I would still um, ask that of the CRA. Um, if we have a fire station that needs to be built, though, we can't, at the end of the day, if there's no willing property owner, public safety, other things, you know, obviously are very important. So I wanted to clarify that's a preference, not an obligation. Um, in terms of, of 
the due process of law, could you just explain what you've undertaken in terms of the, compiling the property um, that's in this area for this project, and then maybe walk the council a little bit through what the project will be, what the public benefits will be, um, and just before you do that too, one other thing on the, the final speaker, I don't equate that low income or uh, affordable housing uh, equates more crime. In fact, it was very low income folks on the Yucca Corridor who believe as much in their neighborhood as, as rich folks do that they want to take that back, that when it was a high crime area, they were able to um, be some of the people who took to the streets, who took to the area to um, beat back gangs and crimes and drugs. So I just wanted to kind of throw that off the table that the fact that there will be affordable housing in this is a good thing. It actually keeps residents who are in Hollywood and their kids living there and not priced out because everything just becomes luxury. But could you walk us through that a little bit and tell us a little bit about the due process you've been undertaking? Sure. I'd, I'd like to point out, first of all, that in 20 years of redevelopment in Hollywood, the redevelopment agency has exercised eminent domain two times. Um, this project at this point, we haven't contemplated eminent domain and the developers have made a commitment to go out and uh, attempt to acquire the property through negotiation. And it's our hope they'll be successful in acquiring the property through negotiation. Um, so. So it's a little premature at this point to even be talking Great. about eminent domain. Thank you. Um, secondly, as far as the project site is concerned, the agency entered into a joint development agreement with the MTA. And the MTA owns about three quarters of the site. The site is the block of Hollywood and Vine on the south east corner and uh, the MTA, there's a representative of the MTA here. They can uh, let you know that the MTA has uh, established a ground lease with the developers and so the developers have currently um, site control over approximately three quarters of the of the site uh, for this project. Um, the additional remaining parcels are privately owned. The developers have entered into a purchase and sale agreement for one of those parcels uh, through negotiation and we expect that they, we hope that they will uh, be able to do the same with the remaining three parcels or th three uh, property owners. Um, the total project has substantial benefits to the city and we uh, relatively limited in public investment. We think the public investment is warranted. There's 75 affordable housing units on the site as well as a living wage agreement and uh, uh, agreement for local hiring for the hotel. So there's numerous new jobs and housing that will be coming to the site that um, will be f to the benefit of really the low income community. The, the overall project includes 145 condominiums, high end condominiums, uh, 350 apartment units and a W hotel on the site uh, at Hollywood and Vine. The agency investment is 4.8 million and the return, the city will not be investing any money into this project but will recoup substantial tax flow uh, from this project. The agency will recoup. So just to clarify that, we're using money to acquire the property and to keep that property. We're not actually investing in the project itself. That's correct. Okay. We're using the funds to acquire land and we'll be conveying the land to the MTA who will then lease it to the developer. Right. So we'll stay in public hands and ownership. Uh, the um, agency again is investing $4.8 million which is the estimated gap on the, on the property, on the project. Um, the total revenue to the city uh, will be approximately $167 million in tax flow including TOT, hotel tax, retail sales tax, business license, parking tax, and utility tax. And that will flow to the city through between the 2010 and 2036. Okay. Um, let me just c conclude with this. Why is this important? Because I hear uh, we've had many, many people in the community who have worked on this. We've had many people in the community who have come out to public meetings on this. There are benefits for Hollywood High School in this. There are benefits for living wage jobs here. There are benefits for housing that people can afford to live in in this. Um, there are jobs generated from the construction. There are many small businesses that will actually go into this. It's not just big pads for big box stores or something in there as well. It will actually probably expand the number of businesses that are currently on the streetscape um, in a number of different directions. But why is this important? And this is what I would say to the community. Public investment in the marketplace does not always work. It does not always go in and it does not always generate jobs in the way and at the level we need. If Hollywood was left alone right now, 
with the way the property is, everything that would go in there, you're right, would be perhaps like what the Niederlander site that was brought up before is going to look like, which is going to be high-end apartments. It's a great thing. Um, it's nice to see that activity, but it doesn't necessarily preserve the community for the community. And uh, low-income community was a phrase that you used, but if you think about, these are, are the people who are our fellow residents of Los Angeles, the people who do the hard work, these are working families, people who just want their work to be rewarded with a decent place to live, with an apartment they can come home to that they can afford, and jobs that actually pay a decent wage. That's why things like this are critical. We've used $40 million in the last 15 years, let's say, to leverage over a billion dollars of private investment. And when you look at the return, it isn't just good for Hollywood. It actually fills the cities coffers with taxes that would otherwise not be paid. And in doing that, we're able to build parks, we're able to take care of schools, we're able to do a number of things that it's true. Some say if, the, if CRAs didn't exist, this money would just go into taxes normally. But that assumes that these developments would happen anyway. And we know that they're very complex developments that actually oftentimes would not. And in a community of Hollywood, where you have folks who are crying out for jobs that they can get in their neighborhood, when you have people whose own families can't find a place to live, this is a critical step forward. It's good for Hollywood, and it's good for the community. We will continue to, and, and I appreciate what you said about eminent domain, because I know there's fear out there about that, but we're not even at that point. And I do hope. Um, from the relocation, if that's need be, even if things are negotiated, from making sure that specific employees mm -hmm. are there. It's the difference between a public good of thousands of jobs that will be connected to this and those that remain there right now. Sometimes that public spur can produce an immense public benefit. And while I appreciate uh, the comments that were made, I really appreciate also that there are a number of residents who live within a block or two of that area that are here in support, who have crafted and said to these developers, we need public goods for this area and have held them accountable to that and ensured that health care and job training, the job training that was brought up, that will be a, a piece of this. That is part of this agreement. And as such, it's one of the best public-private partnerships that I have seen. And so today I would urge your support. Support. I thank you very much. Thanks. Mr. Labonge. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. Garcetti, thank you. Uh, I know you and your staff work very hard on this. Uh, Helmy, would you please sit down? Just a question. You mentioned two properties in its 20 year history. Now, when I started with the city, I remember revitalized Hollywood and Councilwoman Peggy Stevenson in this, and, I, and they had the press conference right on Vine Street, right on this corner. And Aaron, I bet you were there when they had that with Peggy. Uh, what two properties were condemned out of the 20-year history? Do you recall where they were? I, I don't recall. Not where specifically. They were. That's all right. But only two. What this means, though, in the essence of trying to compile this land together for this development, that they will approach these private property owners and try to make a deal with them. And only when they fail to make a deal, then they would ask the CRA would condemn the land for the interest of the long-range good of the public. Is that correct? That's, that is correct. Right. On this particular thing, and I did check with uh, one person here who mentioned earlier about relocation. Uh, it wasn't directly affecting them, but it may affect them in the future. And I want to make sure that we watch on that and to help those who are living in the area on this. Uh, an amazing thing has happened under uh, the last several years. I'm going to say Mr. Garcetti. Uh, uh, but I, I'll go back to Peggy Stevenson and Mike Wu and Jackie Goldberg and now Mr. Garcetti. But really changing it around in the sense of focusing on what Hollywood is a place to be and to experience. Uh, I, I know it does impact people when you have long-term residents. I read the story about the piano man uh, for 75 years selling pianos and all the people who walk through the door, and that is an important uh, aspect. But I know there's an opportunity uh, for the future to create, to be fair to obviously people who are there and when there's this challenge, but also to create those specialty businesses. Uh, what other menu, because I know you could just have a big, what other menus have, uh, to try to create that? I know in the story, no bank is on Hollywood Boulevard, and I think it referenced some of the other uh, challenges that have taken place over the years. What are you trying to do to get other businesses back on Hollywood Boulevard in the sense of a neighborhood? So it's not all necessarily nightclubs or entertainment, but it's also part of the fabric, as Mr. Garcetti said, on either side of the uh, boulevard. The redevelopment agency over the course of time that it's been in place, and certainly during the last 10 years, invested over $12 million in small businesses along Hollywood Boulevard. And we're going to continue to invest in small business. We will be obligated to relocate any business that's affected in this project. And we are continuing to work with developers to encourage them and 
we are looking for ways to create incentives for developers to bring businesses that are locally owned into the businesses on the ground floor. The developers of this project have committed to making a best efforts to achieve living wages in their tenants and uh, we hope to see that happen here. Uh, I know, and Aaron, I know it's personal to you, but Artisan's Patio, which you developed, it, it, small businesses, it's like Farmer's Market, 117 people at 3rd and Fairfax. It's very important to have that aspect. Lastly, Mr. Garcia, I'd like to ask you, I truly believe one of the greatest things about this public building is that there's a public observation deck on top of this building. And I also believe when they built the Metropolitan Transit Authority over behind Union Station, they missed that opportunity to create a public venue. With so much interest in Hollywood and that great monument called the Hollywood Sign, I'd like a friendly amendment or something that would ask that there be a public space you know, whether, and I know at the World Trade Center, and God bless the World Trade Center, but a lot of high rises have public spaces on top where people could go and view the vista. Here would be, in a sense, overlook Hollywood, see downtown, see the Hollywood sign. Is there a public space planned for on the top of any of these buildings? Not a standard hotel, uh, pardon me, Josh Comiskey type of place. <laughs> Currently, the rooftop garden or the rooftop of the of the hotel is a is privately uh, used space. We can work with the developers to identify. I'd want to require uh, something that there be a public space because here we're spending a, a, almost a billion dollars. No, we're spending uh, four point eight million. I know, but totally. I mean, we're we're the game. We're the Hollywood and Vine. We're Hollywood. We're Los Angeles. We're given this opportunity. There's got to be some public uh, space up there, and it, I have no restriction on. It's not to restrict it. I wouldn't mind if there was a fee charged if people did have to pay a dollar or two to go up there, but create some public vista so also you could look at the Hollywood sign. Because one other aspect is people come from all over the world to see the Hollywood sign, and often they get stuck in our little hillside streets and, and cause challenges. Here would be a, a focus point, because if you're at this particular corner at Hollywood and Vine, you could look right up and see the middle of the O, all three O's mm -hmm. for that fact. Thank you, Madam President. Tell me thank you. I thank, uh, thank the Chamber of Co Commerce of Hollywood and their great leadership for all the years, and thank the people who came down, although not all feel the same way we do. And again, Mr. Garcetti, thank you and your staff. Thanks. There's no other, item, no other individuals on the speaker uh, queue. Uh, uh, so, excuse yes, me, Madam President. And there also is an amending motion to include adoption of uh, environmental findings, and that has been distributed to all the council members. Yes. Thank you. Uh, there was an individual who wanted their name to be in the uh, record, Socorro Calejas, from the Yucca community who is in support of the proposal before us today. Oh, looks. Yeah, public comment is over. We were just acknowledging you uh, for your support of that proposal. Open it for one last Would, speaker. Yeah. If you'd like to if have her no speak, objection, Mr. Garcetti. One, one quick speaker. Josh? Josh? I reopened it for one final speaker. Okay. Uh, buenos días a todos. Gracias por darme la oportunidad de hablar. Yo pertenezco a la comunidad oh, un de momento, por favor. Good morning to all of you. I represent the community of? De Yaca. Yaca. Uh, mi nombre es Socorro Callejas. My name is Socorro Callejas. Uh, yo vivo en el corredor de Yaca. I live in the corridor of Yaca. Y creo que este proyecto para nuestra comunidad es grande porque nos va a dar 74 viviendas para gente que, que es de bajos recursos. And I think this project for Yaca is very big because it's going to give us 74 living places for low income families. Low income families. Creo que nos va a dar también trabajos buenos con sueldos dignos para nuestra comunidad. I think it's going to give us wonderful work for low income people to give us quality of life that we need. La comunidad de Yaca es, una, es, es gente que trabaja duro. Hemos trabajado por nuestra comunidad para tener calles limpias, libre de crimen. The Yaca community and family is a family that works hard uh, to fight crime, have clean streets, maintain it, low crime. Estamos pidiendo esta, estas viviendas para no, no salir de, de Hollywood. We're asking for this housing so we don't have to leave Hollywood. 
area. Aquí están creciendo nuestros niños y están siendo gente de bien. Our children are growing up here and they're becoming good citizens. Creo que eso es bien válido para nuestra comunidad. I think that's very valuable for our community. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you very much for your that's testimony helpful. today. Uh, seeing no uh, other individuals on the speaker queue, the item is before us with the amending motion, correct, Madam Clerk? Uh, yes, Madam President. So, it was uh, Mr. Garcetti's efforts. motion to include adoption of uh, environmental findings. The issue that I brought up concerning public space will be dealt with as it comes forth on zoning and other matters, it comes back for approval to make sure we have public spaces. Thank you, Mr. LaBange. The item before us, uh, call the roll, close the roll, tabulate the votes. 11 ayes. Thank you. That item is approved. I think the next item before us is item number 16. And that was called special by Council Member LaBange, and there is an amending motion that has been distributed. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, yes, this is an amending motion, uh, and it should be self explanatory. It helps uh, with our program uh, for AIDS prevention program here in Los Angeles. No necessary discussion is, uh, so I'd ask for an I vote. Thank you, Mr. LaBange. Uh, there's no one on the speaker queue, so the item is before us. Uh, call the roll, close the roll, tabulate the votes. 11 ayes. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, our next item, I believe, is item number 42. And that was called special by Council Member Zine. I'm suiting up. <laughs> um, do we have someone from the city attorney's office on this matter? I, I spoke to uh, Human Relations Executive Director Alan Freeling, and uh, I, I've got some concerns regarding the um, legality of our personnel going on the campuses without some type of agreement. I know that the money issue is far from resolved, but I've got a concern about our employees, city employees, going on to campuses that are having problems without some type of agreement with the school district. And the concern is if they go on those campuses without some type of approval from the school district, the administration, we may have a situation that could occur, liability that could occur, and I just want to make sure we're covered. We hope to get an MOU or a uh, memorandum of some agreement I understand Mr. Fujioka is uh, on vacation for a week. I don't know if anyone else is working on that. I know the urgency, but I'm also concerned about the legality and the concern for our city employees going on to campuses without authorization, some official type of authorization from the school district. Yeah. Mr. Zine, there's no one here today. This is the first I've heard of this concern. If we could put this over till tomorrow, uh, we will address your concern. Because I, I would hope that we would have some document to protect our city employees, to make sure that there is an agreement. I know when the LAPD goes on campus, uh, the school police are the first ones, and then they call them and they help back them up. With the situation that's been taking place at a number of the schools, uh, our personnel have been going there. But what happens if an incident occurs to one of our employees? Uh, what happens if a principal or a teacher doesn't agree with what we are doing? And if we don't have something sanctioned and schools are protected grounds, I've got a concern for our city personnel uh, that we have that covered. So I'd ask if we can get it continued to tomorrow. Also, from Mr. Fujioka's office, if they've made any headway on coming up with some type of a written agreement with the school district, since we are going to be using our employees to help resolve some of the conflicts that are taking place on the campuses. Okay? We'd be happy to so respond we'll continue to you. So we'll continue it for one day. and hopefully get an answer and get this matter resolved for everyone's benefit, the students, uh, our employees, and the administration of the school. And Mr. Zine, we have two uh, of your colleagues on the speaker queue. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Our next uh, speaker is Council Member Tom LaBonge. Madam, that yeah, was uh, inadvertently pushed. <laughs> okay, only one member on the board. Uh, Council Member Jan Perry. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, I wanted to put my... Um, position on the record, and I had a very good conversation with Mr. Zine this morning, and I understand where he's trying to go. Uh, I just wanted to present 
another perspective uh, uh, being the uh, council person who represents the area that includes Jefferson High School. And I was just there on Friday and had the opportunity to talk with uh, two of the classes in a days of dialogue and uh, was quite uh, intrigued by some of the things that kids had to say. Uh, they want more security, they want more structure, they want the metal detectors uh, strictly enforced on a consistent basis, they want the perimeter of the school secure, and uh, they said things like that. Um, sometimes we're in situations where it is urgent and an emergency, and I, I, I am of the opinion that there may be some resistance on the part of LAUSD to reach an understanding with us in a timely way, although it doesn't rule out getting, getting to that at some point in the future. Um, and I had shared with Mr. Zine that I thought that if human relations employees from the city, LAPD, if we're on the campus because of an urgent or emergency situation, uh, I wanted to uh, know from the city attorney, are we covered? Uh, I, I would argue that we are because we're working in the scope and course of our, our regular duties and responding to an emergency situation and that you know, the school district is not a sovereign, sovereign state but a part of our city. Um, and so I wanted to raise those concerns because I, I don't want to stop a process where we are interfacing and interacting on these campuses while we wait for a written or, or a, a, some kind of an agreement. I think by virtue of the fact that they are having us on campus, welcoming, on, welcoming us on campus to community meetings, uh, things like that, uh, to me implies a certain tacit agreement anyway. So I'm encouraging us to continue to interface and interact and uh, to push ahead and then push ahead on Mr. Zine's front also. Thank you very much, Ms. Perry. You've inspired Mr. Parks to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just want to echo what Ms. Perry said. Having been out on the campuses of uh, uh, Crenshaw High School, uh, Jefferson High School a couple of times, and just seeing the general tenor of what's going on, and also having the benefit of the um, human relations personnel at Crenshaw for the last two and a half years, I would ask that we uh, move forward in getting the administrative process of getting these uh, positions uh, available, uh, getting the uh, uh, analytical part of it done and not delay it for the MOU because they already on campus. They've been, uh, whether invited or not, we can resolve those things later, but there's some mechanical things that have to be done internally to have these exempt positions fill. And that's what the motion and Ms. Misikowski's uh, verbal motion last week has done, let's facilitate getting the positions, uh, and then certainly I'm sure that uh, uh, the rabbi will come back to council before uh, uh, we actually uh, put them in place uh, to discuss what the conditions are, but we shouldn't delay the process uh, unnecessarily even for a day if we can get personnel department to be moving forward and getting the exemptions moving forward so that we can start a process of selection and then work out the MOU because uh, I've not seen, even though we've not had success with the MOU, we've not had any indication, at least from Crenshaw and some of the other schools, that uh, our Human Relations Commission has not been invited nor fully participating. It's a matter of personnel resources to get the number of schools that are having problems. We now have Locke, uh, Jefferson, uh, Fairfax, Taft, all those schools have had a problem, and, and Los Angeles High. But the issue is we should not delay the internal exemption process while looking forward to that MOU and getting a more formalized uh, working relationship, because the working relationship is already there. Mr. Zine. I have no problem with moving forward on it. I just want to make sure that our city employees that go onto campuses are covered and that the city is covered and protected. It should be a responsibility of the school district. They had a human relations section and they disbanded it. For whatever reason, I don't know. And we're taking on that responsibility, which is basically a school district responsibility, and I've got concern about our employees from human relations in the event they get assaulted on the campus, in the event something else occurs on the campus, because there are volatile situations. Uh, and it's true, it's happened at Taft High School, it's happened at other schools. There's a lot of tension at a lot of those campuses. But I want to make sure that our employees are covered. I want to make sure that we're on solid ground. So we have this unwritten rule at the present time. And if the school district didn't think it was a priority, we're taking it upon ourselves to make it a priority. It is a priority. 
we need to have their cooperation. They control the school grounds. We don't. We need to make sure that when the LAPD goes in, there's an agreement with the LA Unified School Police, and they do a cooperative effort. And I don't know why there's resistance from the school district to have our human relations, which has been successful in going on the campuses and trying to quell the problems that are taking place. Uh, and there's more schools that exist outside the city boundaries. Are we going to be going on to those schools outside the city boundaries? We, we have to have some type of agreement so we're not running in the dark. And that's what I think one day we could have that. And if we add three personnel to human relations and these continuing outbreaks take place, that's not going to be enough. And we're going to have to add more. Again, we're taking that responsibility for the safety of the students, the safety of the teachers, the safety of the community. And I commend Rabbi Freeling for his uh, patience on this. But I think there's a legal issue that we have to get resolved from the city attorney so our, we don't put, and as the personnel chair, I don't want to put our city employees in any type of jeopardy uh, in the event something happens. Well, why didn't we do this? Why didn't we do that? And I know how those rules with work comp and all those situations take place. Mr. Zion, would you prefer that we uh, re report back to you at personnel committee? Well, I'd like to get this resolved tomorrow if we could, uh, the legal issues, and continue that till tomorrow. And I, I hope there won't be any breakouts today, and if there are, uh, human relations will respond accordingly, but we need to establish some solid ground and not just take over this responsibility without having some type of agreement with the district or the city attorney recommending this is solid ground that we can proceed on. Uh, whether we have an MOU or a letter from the, uh, the president of the school board or some type of agreement, right now we're just showing up and trying to help out. Uh, what happens when the parents show up? And I was at Taft High School when the incident took place, and the parents we're running around trying to get access to the school. Uh, it becomes a very tense situation, and I don't want our employees to be exposed to anything that can cause them harm, and we have to have some identification, some identity, who they are, what they're doing there, so we have the sanction from the school district. That's all I'm asking for. Mr. Labonge. Thank you. Would the general manager like to speak to what Mr. Zine just brought up? Because I think what Mr. Park said, would, Hi, no, I wasn't here, Mr. Zion. I apologize. So. What did you say? Don't apologize to Mr. Zion. Did somebody say that? But I think what Mr. Park says has a lot of merit. Get the process going, but at the same time get it answered. But also, Mr. City Attorney, anytime we go anywhere, a city employee is protected by the City of Los Angeles, correct? In the duty of our jobs. That's okay. correct. We are okay. covered. Okay. And also, if you talk about outside Los Angeles schools, I would imagine that would be the County of Los Angeles Human Relations Commission. So you don't go to you don't go to a Bell High School, you don't go to Carson, no, uh, you don't go to Southgate, you don't go to Garfield, nope. Okay, LA County area. All right, just for a, a minute, if you give me a quick update. Uh, there, um, there is a report that was prepared by Arturo Pina. <clears throat> who's our Deputy Director of Field Services, who was sitting with me, indicating that we are now involved, or have recently been involved, in 23 city schools. We need to be in a position to be responsive when, in fact, a phone call comes in. It seems to me that when that call is received from a principal or from a district superintendent, that is tantamount to an invitation to come as uh, Mr. Zynan said to me in a private conversation this morning, to come to the party. If, in fact, we find ourselves in a situation in which we are not wanted, we simply move away. But it, my feeling is that when we are on a city campus, we are there not only responding to the needs of that school, but we are responding to the needs of the city of Los Angeles, which is within the mandate of the Human Relations Commission. And on that basis, I would argue that we have the, the legal sanction to be there and to do our work. But your work is then guided by the work of the school district, which is the official government entity responsible for that particular location. You work within their protocols. That's correct. All right, good. As All a right. matter of fact, just this morning, we. We tighten the lines of communication between us and the Los Angeles School Police Department. We are now part of their communication tree. So if, in fact, there is word that there is uh, some violence which is about to erupt and their word goes out, we are part of the group of people who are informed. Uh, 
Members, I'm just listening to the debate and I wasn't having the benefit. I appreciate what you're saying, Mr. Zion, but also I appreciate what Mr. Park said as far as trying to get this thing moving. So, because uh, even if you, even if we did approve this today, how long would it take for personnel to act? Does anyone know? Mr. Miller, do you know? How long would it take personnel to act on this? I mean, it's not something that's going to act. Do you know Mr. Parks by chance? Do you know how long it would take? <laughs> do you know how long it would take to act? I'm trying to support what you suggested. I, I don't have a timeline, but my understanding, personnel department has to go through a process. The mayor's office has to facilitate it. We've already asked Mr. Zine if he would consider waiving it in personnel committee to get all these administrative things done. So it could Other, be 30 days. Well, the problem is if right. we don't start immediately, right. we've wasted all of these motions to get a head start. And at some point, you these things are in the budget for July 1st. Right. All right. So, but at some point you can pull it back. I'm just trying to be with this ongoing situation. You need to have immediate action. So, Mr. Miller, could you give me a little well, comment? Well, you, you, you can start the process to, mm -hmm. to get the positions filled and go through what we would need to do administratively um, and, and then hold the decision to actually start deploying staff until there's some movement on the MOU. All right. Would um, that satisfy you, Mr. Zion? problem with that, we're not going to hire three people in two days. There's a hiring process that's going to take place. Correct. I didn't want to hold that up, but I want to make sure, and some of my colleagues want to make sure, that we have solid ground that we're going on to the schools and why the resistance, it's not coming from us, it's coming from the school board. And why it's there, I don't know. And that's why the city attorney and that's why Mr. Fujoka were trying to get this matter resolved so we could expeditiously have it implemented and be there to assist when the need arises. So with that, suggestion, arising. With that suggestion and that of Mr. Parks, what works? That we approve half of this or what do we do? Well, I don't, I, I'll tell you right now, candidly, three people is not going to be enough if we're going to be taking on this task of human relations on LA Unified campuses. So how many do you have, uh, Rabbi, at your... We have a field team of five. Okay. So of that number at the moment, under one circumstance or another, there can be as many as six or seven of us there because Arturo and I are also on campuses when the need persists. And you have one representative or more than one on a campus? At the moment, we have a staff member who is spending a considerable amount of time at Jefferson. So With one one is assigned to Jefferson now. Okay. All I want to make sure, and I'll emphasize it again, is that we have an agreement we don't even have a verbal agreement with the school district. That's all I'm saying. I don't have any problem moving forward, doing what we're doing, but let's get something in place so we are on solid ground with what we're going to well, be doing. At, there. at the proper protocols, I've been to a school uh, sometimes after a, uh, an incident. It was a, a violent incident. And the first thing the deputy superintendent said to the local principal, you followed all the protocols. Good job. I mean, that was they were very they're very protocol orientated in that e effort. Now, uh, I just I, again in listening to what Dennis was saying too to make sure there's protocol so you could show up. But I'm from the Human Relations Commission. They could say so what? They got to make sure you have some uh, relationship to that. But at the same time, to try to move forward with what Mr. Parks did. So what do we do? I don't have a problem moving forward with the positions. They're not going to be in place for at least 30 days, if not longer. At the same time, we need to have some agreement put in place, verbal, uh, written, something. It doesn't have to be real technical that we have the authority by the school board to do what the human relations is going to be doing. So should we, let me just ask this question, approve this, but ask that they come back in two weeks to give an update on the uh, <laughs> development of protocols? And if, and if, we don't, if they don't agree to some protocols, then we're going to have a problem. Right. Okay. Jerry? Uh, if I could suggest, you move this forward and start the process. Do ask for a report back on the status of the MOU um, and also ask from the city attorney what um, uh, liabilities. What liability is and, and uh, you know, obviously one would assume that we would be going on to campuses at the invitation of the school board. So irrespective of the issue of whether or not the city is going to get some money for this, um, you know, which is a policy decision to work out, get feedback from the city attorney on what the liability issues are, if anything occurs, who is, who is legally liable uh, and those sorts of issues. And, uh, and I think the, you can get that report back we, during the process of filling the position. When, when you say who's I legally know, liable, I, meaning in getting the, in giving advice, a human relations counselor from the city of Los Angeles gives the principal of XYZ school advice, maybe that advice doesn't work 
and there's a problem, then we could be liable. That's what you're saying? Well, you know, and if someone is on campus and an incident happens and they're injured, uh, uh, you know, who covers the cost for that? I mean, the, the, the legal right. issues that need to be worked out irrespective of any money flow uh, that might go back and forth between the two agencies. I know Very that when, when a campus is locked down, they don't let people in the campus. They lock the campus down. That's what they did at Taft High School. When the human relations representatives show up, they've got city identification. City identification doesn't give them access to schools. What I'm saying is we've got to have something in place where people can go onto campus and do what they need to do to help out. Now, they've got some situations, some schools, where it's an ongoing situation. Taft was unusual. It may be more breakouts in the Valley or some other locations. So your folks know exactly what they can do. The principals know what they can do. And there's an understanding that they're coming here to help. The way it is now, Human Relations shows up with the city ID, and you could get someone who's resistant to it and another campus that breaks out with some violence. That's all I'm saying is have something down so we all know what the rules are. And as far as the compensation, that's another matter we'll have to worry about down the road. That's not my big issue. My issue is making sure we're all on the same page. I think that's what Us we're trying to get to. Board. And that's what we're trying to get to. Mr. Smith. Yeah, thank you. I, I think the important part here is that these positions weren't funded till July 1. We've got 30 days to resolve those issues. Mr. Zion, you have very, very valid concerns, and I had the same concerns last week and in committee. So I think we have 30 days to resolve those issues. We can go forward with the planning process, getting personnel to get the people lined up, ready to go July 1, and just have Mr. Miller or Mr. Freeling report back to council by the 30th of June that we've talked to LAUSD, that they want us to be there, and that some of the legal issues have been resolved. So let's go forward with this today but to have you report back to us within 30 days before we actually put people on July 1. Any other questions, comments? Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Okay, next item please. Uh, council has motions for posting and referral. Motion shall be posted and referred. And that clears the desk. Thank you, colleagues. It's the end of our agenda today. Do we have any announcements? Mr. Number, we have Parks? Number, four, number 14, forthwith. Forthwith on 14. Ahead, any announcements yeah, today? Yeah, just an announcement, Mr. President and members. I uh, just returned with a delegation of 90 residents of Los Angeles to our sister city of Nagoya, uh, where it was a great festival. I met with uh, mayors from Sydney, Australia, Nanjing, China. Uh, also with uh, an ambassador to Mexico City and also Tehran, Italy, and uh, it was a very uh, rewarding experience to see how well uh, our relations work with the ports of Nagoya, the ports of Los Angeles, very successful and, and uh, made some good uh, relations. So I wanted to report back into you things that well. Rode the high-speed rail, Mr. Cardenas. Went real fast, uh, 250 miles an hour, high speed. Visited their wonderful zoo. It's good to be home as always, so thank you. Welcome home, Mr. LeBange. Other announcements, colleagues? Hope everybody had a great Memorial Day holiday and weekend. Uh, if there's no further announcements, Ms. Perry? Uh, my dear friend and town crier, Don Garza, has reminded me to announce the town crier competition this Friday, June the 4th, first session, June 3rd, this Friday, first session will be held 11 o'clock on the 1115 Overa Street and then 2 p.m. on the south lawn of City Hall. Hello. And they'll be here this Friday morning, 10 in the morning, to say hello. Thank you. To say hear ye, hear ye. Oh, yay. <laughs> Other announcements, colleagues? If not, do we have adjourning motions today? Do we have adjourning tributes for today? Please rise for adjourning motions. Ms. Gruel. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like the council to adjourn uh, in uh, memory of Jimmy G. Rivers. He passed away on May 9, 2005. He was 62 years old. Jimmy Rivers was a dedicated staff member of Millican Middle, Middle School in Sherman Oaks and passed away on May 9 due to a sudden heart attack three days before his 63rd birthday. Jimmy was born in Dangerfield, Texas on May 12, 1942. He was director of numerous programs at Millican, Impact, 
Millican Healthy Start Initiative Peer Mediation Program, Mighty Millican Mentoring Program, Millican Cadet Corps, and Sugar Ray Youth Foundation. He was a member of West Angeles Church of God and Christ, where he directed the West Angeles Scholarship Fund organization. He was employed by LAUSD for 33 years and served at numerous middle and high schools as a teacher, dean, and administrator. Jimmy was a one in a million kind of man. He touched the lives of students. For many, he was a surrogate father, encouraging them to stand tall and proud and to do their best at whatever they attempted. He was a gentle giant amongst men and an inspiration to us all. He will be terribly missed by the entire community at Millican Middle School. He is survived by his wife, Alice Yvonne Rivers, his three sons, Anthony, Rodney, and Patrick, and daughter, Erin, 10 grandchildren, two sisters, Maggie Johnson and Gloria Dean Reeves, and eight sisters-in-law, six brothers-in-law, and a host of nieces and nephew. Uh, may he rest in peace. Thank you. Other tributes? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you all very much. This meeting is adjourned. City View, Channel 35. Your city, your channel.